What's up, everybody? So I want to start shifting my videos a little bit. Um, mostly this is part of just a natural evolution of what I'm talking about. I mean, I can only talk about romantic narcissism so much uh, until I cover all the points. Um, on another level, I'll just get tired of talking about it. It becomes unhealthy to just continue to talk about it. At some point, you got to like kind of let it go, move on. Uh, I've discussed that before. I got off all the little support forums and stuff, and it really improved the quality of my life by doing that. Um, <clears throat> so today I want to talk about one aspect of narcissist. I'm sorry, I'm getting all my stuff out of my wall, my pant pockets. Um, I want to talk about narcissistic families, um, and one aspect in, in particular that, that just hit me the other day. Um, so I started to think about narcissistic parents and how they they want to squash all your hopes and dreams um, and your hobbies and your passions. Um, they do. Uh, it's the same thing as a romantic narcissist partner. They will squash everything that you love. Um, and then I had to start thinking, obviously, along those lines, you know, what if you grow up around that environment? which in some levels I did. Um, and it, for sure, everything, um, you know, that I found interesting or everything that was a passion was degraded or, you know, talk shit about. Um, my siblings definitely went through the same thing as well. Everything that they were into um, that made them happy was, uh, was squashed. Um, so, for instance, uh, you know, there were several occasions with me personally, um, with just little hobbies that I was like, I really like this. I want to try it out. Um, one of them being like, I got into really into hockey at one point and was like playing with it, you know, playing with a hockey stick and a puck outside one day. And um, one of the narcs came home and was like, What the fuck are you doing? You're breaking shit. And just like really came down hard on me and like ripped my ass part about just being outside, being a kid playing hockey. Um, you know, that destroyed my want to ever really do that again. Um, and it, it got me to thinking like, you know, that being, you know, that, that being stunted and, and squashed, I mean, you never know who could have been, you know, I could have been the next awesome ass hockey player. You never know. I never had the opportunity to find out. Um, I went with, along with so many, so many things I was interested in that was just demeaned and destroyed. Um, you know, I got really into, you know, bonsai trees at one point, like green thumb type of, I just really fucking like bonsai trees. And that was, you know, talked down about and, and, and also destroyed. Um, my brother and I were really big into video games. We just loved video games. Um, and, and that was demeaned and talked shit about and, and stifled at every corner it could possibly be, you know. Um, and that's just three or four examples. Those, when you're a child, you know, those, those examples run into probably thousands of situations. I mean, you're, you're a kid. You're experimenting. Who am I? Like you're trying to find your autonomy. What 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 is me? Who am I? What what do I like that is specific to me? And if that is constantly squashed, I mean, you just have to wonder how many un. I'll, I'll phrase it in a in a kind of a metaphorical, symbolic way. How many unbloomed flowers are out there because of narcissistic abuse? How many kids out there never got to fulfill their 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 hopes and dreams because of their parents? who were narcissists or maybe borderlines or whatever, toxic parents squashed their fucking dreams and never let them pursue that. You know, I could have been a great hockey player. Who knows? I could have been um, a, a great bonsai tree artist. Who knows? Um, you know, one of, one of my brother's situations, he was really into, like, knives and stuff as a kid. I don't know why, but he was. You know, and there's he that was squashed as well. Um, 
you know, he could have been the next, you know, um, who's like a knife maker? I don't fucking know. I mean, you know, he could have been a, 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 a blacksmith in his future because he loved knives so much and he wanted to start making them himself. And, you know, any anything along those lines. Like, how many people have been stifled by their parents? Now, here's the one that really fucking gets me, and this is how I just... Why, why, I guess maybe why it hits me so hard is, um, as I was talking about on this channel before, um, I'm a mechanic now, self-employed. Back in the day, I loved, I've loved cars my entire life. Um, even my mom in her journal when, she, when I was like three was like, he plays the cars all day long, can't put them down. I think he's going to grow up and do something with cars. She wrote that in her journal, okay, at three years old. And sure as shit, you know, my whole, you know, I, always had an obsession with cars you know um for christmas gifts and stuff i always want remote controlled cars um when i got older you know i wanted a go-kart always had a passion for cars driving cars and anything you know to do with fucking motors and, and, and moving fast that was attempted to be stifled too and to this day it still is attempting to be stifled um You'll never make any money in that field. Uh, you you, just, you don't want to be a blue collar worker. There's no there's no respect and glory in, in that field. Um, you won't make enough money. Yeah, yeah, just countless and you name it. It was it was cut down, degraded upon, so on and so forth. And what really gets me about that is I was lucky enough. Lucky enough for me, I did I didn't really really get into cars till I was sixteen. Obviously, you know, my first car. So I was old enough to actually at least somewhat be like, okay, fuck you, I'm doing it anyway. Um, but, you know, look at, look at where it's got me now. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm literally self-employed, 100,000% solely sufficient, and I make good money. I uphold a good lifestyle off of what I do. Moreover, and more important than that, I love what I do. I mean, I, I when I was working in my IT job, dude, every day I woke up and I wanted to shoot myself. It fucking sucked. I hated it. I hated it to a point, oh my God, you could not even put into words how much I hated this job. Now I wake up, I'm like, huh, oh, I'm going to work. No big deal. I get off work. I'm not exhausted. I'm not mentally exhausted. I'm just like, okay, cool. Work's done. Made my money today. Life is great. I don't have any of the stress. Moreover than that, the, the the nonsense that you won't get any respect, you won't do this, you won't do that. Um, bullshit, <laughs> absolute bullshit. My clients love and respect me so damn much; it's unbelievable. Every single one of them, it, at by the end of the, by the end of the day or a couple days, whatever long it takes for me to get done with their car. They are so grateful for me. It's it's insane. I mean, just absolutely grateful. Like, oh gosh, you saved me so much money. Thank you so much. I don't know what I would have done without you. All the time I get that. And it makes me feel wanted, important, respected. You know, multiple other things. Not only that, I look back at, you know... 90% of the friends I have were, were through uh, were cars. Most of the people I know I met through cars. I, I, you know, back in the day, I used to race a lot and, and build you know fast cars just to fuck around with. Most of the friends I have were through that. Most of the, uh, you know, I have relatively you know awesome uh, reputation around here for, for the cars I build and the work that I do by my clients and my friends um, through cars. All of that is through cars. Um, you know, so my point being here is that everything, um, basically that, that, that makes my life as wonderful as it is right now, friends and reputation and work and money and everything, stemmed from you know, my love for cars and automotive stuff. Now, what would have happened, do you think, if that was squashed 
or I allowed it to be squashed at an early age. I'd be sitting here at, at 31 years old, completely lost, no income, and miserable and hating life, not knowing what the hell I wanted to do with life. And that right there just makes me wonder, how many people in this world have had their dreams and their loves and their hobbies crushed because of fucking narcissistic dick-ass parents saying, that's not good enough, you can't do that. Just think about that. And, and I, I want you to think about it too, um, you know, in your own life. Because let's be honest, most of us that have been through narcissistic romantic relationships have had some form of narcissistic abuse when we were children. Um, so, you know, you, you really, moving on to the next step, you have to stop fucking worrying about what other people say, whatever people think, and just do what your heart tells you to do. And for me, that was, you know, cars. I, I just loved fucking cars. And look at, what it's, look at where it's gotten me. Without that, I would have been so fucked in life. You know, and so if you fucking love painting, and, and people are talking shit about it. Fuck them. Go out and paint. If you, you know, if you love sewing, go sew some badass purses. Do your shit, and fuck what everybody else thinks. Live your dreams. Make yourself happy, dude. I could not live another day l trying to s fulfill somebody else's dream, and that's why I eventually got to the point where I quit my IT job and I was like, fuck it. I'm being self-employed. I'm doing what the fuck I want. And that was that, you know, but that was a hard, hard, you know, hard road to get to that point to finally make that decision. And it was risky as fuck. But with risk comes reward. Do it for yourself. Do what you fucking love. Don't wait. You have maybe at my age, I have maybe another 40 or 50 years on this world. You think I'm going to spend that being unhappy every day doing shit I don't want to fucking do? Hell no. And then... Parallel to this um, idea here is that, you know, just do it. Just fucking, it's like the Shia LaBeouf, do it. Just do it. Just do what you want to do. But parallel to that, when you do become successful doing what you want to do, a lot of people are going to be really fucking pissed off. A lot of people are going to hate you. A lot of people are going to talk shit about you. A lot of people are going to continue to try to demean it. Why is that? Um, honestly, jealousy and the fact that they are pissed the fuck off that they didn't follow their dreams or even that they don't know even yet what their dreams are. I mean, I have people that are in, you know, semi-friends associates that are, you know, in their 40s and they are angry as fuck at me every day going, why don't you just get a real job? What the fuck do you think I have? I'm fucking self-employed. Like, I mean, a real job? Like, if I fail, I lose everything. If I fail at my job, I lose my apartment, I lose my car, I lose fucking everything. And you, and they have the, 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 the gall to say, get a real job. Why? Because they're at that age and they have absolutely no fucking clue what they want to do. Their dreams have never been met. They never will be aspired. They talk shit out of simple jealousy. You know, they go to work every day and they hate their life. That sucks for them. I've been there, I've done it. But you know, not my problem. You know, if you hate your life, go find something you want to do. So, number one, do what you fucking love. Number two, when the people start fucking hating on you, keep going. Just keep going. Just keep doing it. There's some people, you know, the, the very good friends that I have, they're overjoyed for me. They love what I'm doing. They think it's awesome, amazing. The people that are fucking lost souls, that never never continued on with their life, never achieved anything, are the ones that will talk shit to you. So keep going. Which brings me to a quote that I saw the other day, which is really good, because like I said, I used to like video games. and I don't know who said it, but they're like, if... Um, what did it say? It said, the one thing I learned from video games, if you start running into enemies, you know you're going the right direction. That That's very insightful, actually. Um, so, you know, 
when you start when you start making these moves, man, you're gonna get some hate. You're gonna get some hate. A lot of it, probably. Um, but what is life without doing what you want to do? What what is, what is life without any of that? It, nothing. Pointless. Um, so I want you know I want I want you to think back on all the things that you wanted to do as a child and how many of those were were, were stifled and and shoved off and ignored or put down. Maybe it's time to start doing um, some of those things again. See if you know maybe you really like them. You, you could in the future make a living off just doing that. All right, guys. Um, going a long time here, so I'll talk to you later.